Hello. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, how do you feel here in Bulgaria, in Senshi? Uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's my first time here. Oh, really? Um, so the, the organization is professional. Being a special guest teacher, they've treated me very well. And uh, just the whole passion, the audience, uh, the fans, the, the participants, the staff, uh, the hotel. I'm looking forward to the flights tonight. And uh, yeah, it's just been a wonderful experience. This is awesome for real. During the training, I noticed that you speak uh, with a lot of energy and passion. Uh, what do you want to learn or to show um, all of the um, future contestants here in Senshi? Yes, I, um, you know, of course I need to teach uh, the technique, you know, the, the movement, the strike, the elbows that I'm known for. I want to teach that because it's important, of course, to, uh, to show the movement. Um, but over the years of teaching, after I finished fighting, I realized that the most magical thing is the energy, the mindset, the passion, the will to win. All those different factors that not a lot of, uh, sort of people teach that format. They just teach the, 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 the technical striking side of it and they leave, they leave out a lot of the energy around the mentality that, that it's, uh, it takes you know, to be a champion um, or even just to be a winner on any level. So I love to uh, you know, passionately show my strikes but with a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of vibration. That way the, the person picks up that vibration feeling. Okay? And obviously I also talk to them about mentality like we we're talking about today, the will to win. You, know, you have to have that strong will to want to win and that's got to be you know, one of the most important things um, if you want to be successful, um, especially in a, in, a, in a combat sport, which is a lot of, uh, a lot of violence, and a lot of you know, hard knocks and a lot of uh, physical pain along the journey. You have to have a strong will to be able to push through all of that um, to get your you know, victory at the end. This is amazing for real. And what about the men with the golden elbows? Do you remember the first time when you, when you hear that? Yes, I do. Um, in 2003, December, I won my first world title and I, I, I got an elbow strike, boom, straight over the top like I was uh, showing the, the students today. And I'd been winning fights with elbows leading up into this fight. But my first world title fight, I won in the first round with an elbow knockout and the guy was asleep, like out cold. And that was in December. 2003. In January, they have a magazine in Australia, the kickbox international kickboxing magazine. So it was the next ver uh, the time for the every couple of months they had a, a new release. So January was the new release of the magazine. On the front cover, it was the man with the golden elbows, Whoa. Nathan Carnage Corbett. So, so the publishing company and the the, the commentators, Michael Chavallo and, and Mark Hammer Castanini, these people. They, they were there, obviously, come up with the name. Uh, probably Michael Chavallo, who's always, you know, you know giving me the, the big, the big, the big kibosh and the big names in his thing. So that was the time that I was, uh, you know, dubbed the man with the golden elbows in 2004, January. And I guess it's, it, it's stuck ever since. This is amazing. And what about your first fight? Do you remember it? You know what? I do remember my first fight. Um, I was, uh, it was just like a, a my first kickboxing fight, you know, because I started in karate, so obviously I had karate fights when I was young, but I remember my first kickboxing fight, it was just like, you know, 16 years old. Um, I ended up uh, getting a, a win, a, a stoppage, which was cool, like a second round KO. Um, but I really, uh, if I move forward from that point to like my real, like, real fights in my fight career, when my fight career really started, um, I, I do remember it, and I also, um, that was the night that I won that fight. And then the, my trainers and the people in the tr bus were saying, you know, we need to come up with a fight name. Like, what's gonna be your fight name? Maybe it's Nasty Boy, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And I didn't like any of the names uh, that they were saying at the time, because obviously you can't name yourself, it has to be given to you from a, someone else. And then we're driving in the bus home and then a few people were just were silent. And then after a while, you know, one of the, the, the trainers is like, Carnage. And I'm like, Carnage? Yeah, that sounds good. So then that was the, the name and that's when it started. So I remember that time in my career, which was in 2000 when I first really started my Muay Thai career. 
um, and become carnage. So I lived up to that over the last 15 years of my fight career from there on, which was in 2000 when I got named carnage. And could you tell me more about karate, about the role in your life, in your career you know, also? Karate, um, karate was the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. Um, with all the world title fights and all those championship belts, uh, I respect them all and it's a magical journey. But the karate is really the foundation of who I am. It taught me how to be the person I am, it taught me all the values, it taught me all the discipline and also taught me you know, the respect and the humility of what a martial artist should be. So I've always remained humble along my journey as a champion. Um, and now as a teacher, I realize how much the karate is the spirit of myself and the spirit of my KO victories. I had 64 fights, 60 wins, and I had 42 knockouts. And I didn't think about my karate in my fight career as a Thai boxer because it wasn't, the techniques don't look the same. But now when I look back at some of my fights or I look at the way that I hit people with elbows, it had that energy of karate, like that like that key eye, that one hit strike kill, like punch straight through a brick wall kind of feeling. And I had that energy of the, the karate inside of me because I only started when I was 14 with karate, I had no, no other martial arts experience. So my first lesson, my first three or four years of, of le learning fighting or martial arts was karate. And then I dibbled, dibbled in Muay Thai and I cross trained a little bit and then eventually I wanted to become a professional fighter. So karate was more amateur so I moved on to becoming a Thai boxer. But, Karate is the, probably the, the biggest and the greatest thing for me that happened in my life. And now when I teach in uh, California, I, I taught some of the students in a Muay Thai gym what a sensei is. Because in Thai boxing, they don't use the word sensei. They don't use that term. It's, it's a Japanese term for teacher. And uh, so then I started teaching the students what a sensei means. It's, a, it's someone who is not just a teacher, it's someone who is making you uh, feel accountable to, you know, someone who you have to respect and then you want to, you don't want to disappoint them and then when you don't want to disappoint someone, you, you, you show up and you do what's required and you do more than what's required to be a better person, a better human being and of course if you're competing, a better fighter. So as a sensei now, I'm not just the Nathan Carnage core but the fighter, I'm, I'm now the sensei, sensei and I uh, use that energy and, and possess that in my life uh, with the way that I carry myself and the way that I teach. So what is the most important thing in the sport for one person and for you also? You know, I think the most important thing in the sport is basically, you know, self-discovery and, um, you know, betterment, self-betterment, you know, like really like most people who start martial arts, you know, they start with either some kind of, you know, confidence issue or they want to learn to defend themselves or they, they come from nothing and they want to achieve something or they just want to, the feeling of what, it must feel like to connect to like the, our self completely, you know what I mean, as our human self. Um, so I really feel like uh, the biggest gift, you know, that, that it can bring is, 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 is growth, self growth, you know, all the hard knocks and all the hard training, all the discipline, all the overcoming adversity, overcoming the fear of getting in the fight and fighting someone or fighting in front of a crowd or, having to do the extra, you know, the extra miles of running or having to do the extra, the bag rounds or all those things that pushes you to makes you become stronger, it makes you become, you know, a better version of yourself. So I feel like that's the, the biggest uh, asset and the biggest, you know, victory of anyone who chooses this, 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 uh, this life journey. And in that point of view, do you think that people who came here for you are going to go back to their homes different and changed also. You know, I, um, I believe so. I'm, I, I am confident um, that, they, that, they, that they will change because uh, that's what I uh, feel my, my mission is to do, is to really make an impact and make people just shift and change just one little direction in, inside themselves to, to be the uh, closer to that better version of themselves and so far I've had a, a great few days of teaching a, a lot of uh, students have been you know excited happy a lot of good feedback so I'm very confident that I will change a lot of people's perspective um, and intensity in how they carry themselves moving forward
This is really amazing. And um, now I would like to show you uh, one video. My colleague will show you what I mean. Um, it's uh, one uh, Bulgarian Karate Kyokushin uh, fighter who made uh, one of the most uh, spectacular spin uh, elbow knockouts. So, yeah, you, uh, he will show you okay, and okay, okay. I would like to hear your uh, opinion and also could you tell me more about oh. this technique? Oh, that's very nasty. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is asleep. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Um, thank you. You know, the, the, the spinning elbow is something that I only ever throw on once. I only threw it once in my fight career back in 2003. And I, I, the reason why I never liked to, to, to do the spinning elbow technique is because I couldn't see my opponent. I never wanted to take my eyes off my opponent. But it's, as you can see in, in that video, or from what I'm seeing, it's very effective when you, uh, 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 you go to a situation where there's nothing more you could do, but if you spin, then there's one extra technique there. And the other guy was on, obviously unexpected. Uh, and that's when the, the big KO comes. So I wasn't very uh, fond of that technique as far as myself. I don't teach that technique, but I, I, I know how magical it is. And uh, it's, it, when I see people like, like this uh, sensei, um, throwing that over, I'm just like, oh my god, because like, the person's mouth guard goes flying, he's knocked out cold. Uh, it was very impressive, especially from a karate fighter, because karate usually, um, from, from where I come from and when it, I remember doing my karate, they're not very good with elbows. They don't understand elbows, because elbows really, you know, is the, the best elbow techniques in the world comes from Thailand and Muay Thai. And uh, the, the karate understand the elbow not so is not so high level like Muay Thai because it's, usually it's not an elbow sport. Okay, in, in Kyokushin, you know you, you can't punch the head, so you can't elbow to the head. It's only to the body, so there's no elbow strikes. This was obviously a Muay Thai fight with karate fighters, and the elbow was nasty. So for seeing that, you know, he's uh, impressed me a lot, very much. Yeah, I also think the same. Yeah. <laughs> as a woman. I don't want to be hit by that elbow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a little bit different, uh, yeah, different question about the social medias, because I saw that you have a lot of uh, followers in social medias. So um, my, my question is, um, do you think this is important for your career now? And do you think uh, the social networks changed our lives and also the combat sports? Yes, yes, yes. So um, my, the, the thing that I feel blessed mostly about in my fight career was before social media. So I didn't think about training and posting a video. I didn't think about like, you know, trying to you know, do something on Instagram or whatever it is platform. I just fought and trained and, and someone would film some, some, some footage and some, you know, go on, you know, people would, couldn't even watch, didn't even know who's going to win the fight. Maybe they get a VHS tape back in the day, maybe they get a CD, maybe you got to YouTube, and then you become famous uh, because people would talk about you all around, somehow they would talk about you around the world without even really not to see it other than YouTube. So I felt that helped me secure like, you know, a, a, a permanent position as like a, a champion forever. Where social media is very fast. It's like, okay, is it, you know, next, next, we all scroll, next, 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 next. People, ex you know, intention to expand is very short now. It's like, oh, it's 10 seconds is too long, and then move forward, move forward, move forward. However, it's, um, so I don't really love social media uh, Instagram, but I use social media Instagram because now that's the, the lens that people are searching uh, for information, they're searching for, um, Ed education and of course I have that platform um, to keep my fans connected globally um, for seminars, for business, for inspiration and stuff like that. But I personally um, don't love social media because I feel like there's a lot of uh, negativity, there's a lot of toxic toxicity, you know, and uh, a lot of like uh, people feeling um, very much like a inadequate you know because someone else is more beautiful someone else got a bigger car someone else has got you know something else something's got this you know someone's comparing to you and comparing to this and comparing to that so it's a very good tool if you can use it correctly 
So I think it's an, it's an amazing thing over here if it's used correctly, but also very, it can be very toxic and very dangerous as well. So it's one of those you know, things that we have to keep up with the times, right? Technology, we have to feed the machine, I call it, feeding the machine every day to keep it happy and keep the fans happy. But you have to be very careful uh, mentally um, to not allow it to, you know, be a distraction. Or you see people, you know, you look around everywhere and everyone's on their phones all the time, you know. Sometimes I catch myself, I'm like, well, I'm that same person, I'm on my phone again. Like, just put the phone down, you know. So, like, back when we were training, we just trained. There was no one, I'm at the gym, tag Instagram. <laughs> here I am doing, a, here I am eating my breakfast, tag Instagram. Here I am with my abs in the mirror, tag Instagram. But know? do you think it's important to be an influencer if you are a famous sportist? I think what's important is sharing the right message. Whether, it's, whether you call it an influencer or you call it you know, whatever you want to call it, I think if you, have, um, if you have power, if you have position, if you have a voice and you use it for the right good stuff, I think it's important. I think if, as, a, as a champion, it's your responsibility to, uh, to give inspiration to people. So again, like I said, it is a great tool and uh, I use it, of course, and, and we use it and, and, and uh, everyone uses it to, to push that message. Yeah, again, it's just making sure that um, you're using it for the right, the right thing and for the good thing and, and, and just be careful of, uh, of what it could do. Because e even people, you know, uh, when I was fighting, you, you didn't even know who you were fighting, you know, because like there wasn't, you know, information out there. So sometimes that was a good thing because now people are like, too much focused on what the other person is doing and they're losing focus on what they're doing where they should just worry about themselves and not worry about the other person but that can sort of like play into to how you know people start to train or start to you know think differently yeah i agree with you 100 percent and i would like to thank you very much for this interview i really appreciate it and i wish you good luck here in bulgaria in senshi and all around the world Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.